jupiter.com, google collab, slash github, and so on. Still uh, waiting for that volunteer who will move us from MATLAB into, um, into Python. But okay, let's do it with MATLAB. You know, not, not such a difficult thing. So what's going on in MATLAB? MATLAB is a nice tool that uh, we get in the university. And uh, the MAT in MATLAB doesn't stand for mathematics, but rather it stands for matrix. MATLAB is really cool with matrices and vectors. So, for example, um, I can do a 2 plus 2 in MATLAB. It'll get 4. Amazing, right? But I think you can also do that in Python. Let me get it a little larger. I can also do... I can also create a vector. Size 10. And I can do... Two. Um, let's see how many people we end up in the course. I think that I think there are enough people. Uh, I think there is enough for two. I think so. I think what's going to happen is one week before the end of the course, people are going to start panicking and say, "Hey, oh, thirty percent of the grade. I didn't notice. You didn't tell me." Nah, nah, nah. Um, all of the um, there in in the Moodle you will find uh, a bunch of labs. Uh, there is going to be a lab for uh, lecture three, five, and seven. I see three, five, and seven. So three lectures, three labs. Uh, you need to convert them to Python. It's very very easy. I have a setup in the repository for the course. You can already find. Um, uh, where can you find it? It's here uh, in the uh, Git. Uh, there is something called labs here. You just these are the labs. Uh, you can open them with uh, editors. You can also see this using uh, uh, Colab if you want. There's an explanation in the center. Think, don't think about it as a, a difficult job. Think of it as an important service to get uh, open source and, and in humanity and so on and whatever, yeah? yeah. So if I can go on to, to playing with, uh, with MATLAB, which you which really like to do. Uh, so MATLAB uh, can, uh, I can do things with vectors. I can do things like uh, log of x also works. I'm going to do something very strange. I'm going to try to does this make everything bigger? Okay, I'm doing log of x, and and then I get a log. And I all can also do what is called a logical uh, array, which is cool. I do uh, x is greater than five, and now I get an array of boolean values, true and false, if this array is greater than. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, to talk to you about Students t-test. Students t-test, uh, as somebody suggested, is the right way of telling apart uh, two distributions to see if they are uh, the same or different sets. And a little about the history of uh, students uh, t-test. So, student t-test was not invented by uh, George Washington students, but uh, rather by uh, William Seeley Gossett, uh, a very, very smart, uh, mathematician and statistician who was uh, actually finished, I think, in Oxford and was hired by the famous beer distillery in Ireland called Guinness. Uh, and Guinness had a hiring policy of hiring uh, the top statistics students to work on uh, uh, improving their beer, you know, measuring all sorts of stuff going on. And uh, well, William Sidney Gossett uh, used to hang around with somebody called uh, Pearson. Pearson was the guy who invented uh, the Pearson correlation. He was also, uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll have some time to talk about him and what, uh, what his opinions on, on stuff were. But uh, okay, he worked for Guinness and, uh, and Pearson had, um, had the journal. He was the editor of a journal. And uh, one day, uh, uh, 
William Sealy Gossett was working in his uh, lab in, in, in the Guinness uh, Brewery, and he found out a really nice uh, tool to tell apart two distributions. And he was using it actually uh, for something related to beer, as it were, something about the quality of beer or the quantity of beer, something like, you know, like that, um, like uh, Homer Simpson's song about beer. It was the source and answer of all of life's problems. And uh, so he told uh, Pearson about uh, this uh, nice idea that he had, and Pearson said, listen, you really should, uh, you should publish it in my, uh, in my journal. It's a really interesting idea. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, people who worked for Guinness were not allowed to publish. And the reason was that uh, Guinness, the guy who was running the Guinness Bureau was also named Guinness, um, he wasn't, uh, he was afraid of uh, that people uh, might write a paper and disclose some commercial secrets of, uh, of the brewery and they would lose, um, they would lose money. So he was really against uh, publishing anything by people who were for Guinness. So Pearson talked to him and he said, listen, this is very important, this is very significant and so on. So uh, he agreed to publish this paper uh, under a pseudonym. Pseudonym is uh, a fake name. Uh, so William Sully Gossett published it under the name of Student. Okay, and a little about student success before we go into the, the science here. Um, it's used for, uh, very, very useful for all sorts of the experimental sciences to tell if I have a, a hypothesis uh, a good hypothesis. So who here has already heard, uh, been taught about hypothesis testing and t-testing in some other course? All the data scientists probably, right? Who here learned about t-test and hypothesis testing in some other place in, in their lives or in the universe? So I'm gonna do it very, very, uh, very, very briefly. Um, yeah, so some people are here, some people are, are finished with today. Um, so um, let's, uh, I, I have a hypothesis. I'm a, I'm a scientist and I think that if I take the trees, uh, the leaves falling from the tree um, on the northern side of the tree, uh, they have more green stuff, more moss on them than the leaves falling on the south side of the tree. Why am I saying that? Why am I claiming that? Because the sun, is on the south side, it hits the tree and the tree dries up and then there is less uh, moisture for the moss to develop. And uh, I tried to write a paper about it, but uh, I didn't do an experiment, so I can't write it paper. So I decided I want to do an experiment. So I take my uh, grad student and I give my grad student two sacks and I tell the student, go to the tree and fill me a sack full of leaves from the south side of the tree and a sack full of leaves from the north side of the tree. And the student goes and works all day and comes back with a sack of trees from the north and a sack of trees from the south. And he says, wow, well, I'm finished. Can I go home now? I say, no. Now you have to go over each one of the leaves in the tree and, and then write in a big expel spreadsheet what percentage of moss is on each leaf? Uh, and, uh, and the student works hard. And then I have, uh, I have a list of moisture, of, of moss percentages on uh, values from the north side of the tree and for leaves from the south side of the tree. Now, what do I, what do I say to the student now? Any suggestion? Well done, okay. You're a great student. I'm so proud of you. Right. I can say that. Uh, quit. Maybe. I hope he didn't meet somebody next to the tree. Right. hope there was six, uh, two meters between him and the next tree. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, but now uh, can I write my paper? What do I do with, with the, I have like a vector of numbers on the same on the north side and the vector of numbers on the, on the south side. So uh, one thing, are these vectors, do they have to be the same length? Do these vectors have to be the same length? Do you have to say, to get exactly the same amount of, of leaves from the north and from the south? Yes, of course, the answer is no, I don't have, I can get any number of, of, of uh, leaves. Um, 
if I was talking about the paired t test, which is a different kind of test, I would need the exact number of, of uh, measurements. Uh, no, I don't actually look at the average or uh, an average is not enough. An average is not enough. An average is not enough to convince the security engineer. It's not scientifically sound. I need something more. And what I do is run students t test. How I do it is I either call the t-test2 function in MATLAB or the t-test underscore int function in SciPy. Uh, if you want to go talk about the math behind it, uh, no, 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 not this. I'll show you. I'll show you in the MATLAB. I'll show you everything. But uh, I'm going to run the t-test, and it's going to tell me basically what is the probability that I'm sampling from two different distributions. And of course, the opposite of it is what is the probability that I'm actually sampling from the same distribution, which means uh, I have a null hypothesis. My experiment isn't showing anything. And this is the unpaired t-test. The paired t-test is when I compare actually uh, ordered pairs, for example, maybe before and after an intervention or before and after some medicine was, was administered and so on. Um, but in our case, it's an unpaired t-test. I have, I have two bunches of measurements, of timing measurements. And I want to see if they're the same distribution. So let's look at the, at the code now. Um, what I'm doing now is, oh, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. I need to click on this. I'm going to create, using the, the MATLAB matrix notation, I'm going to create two random vectors. And they have mu1 and mu2 are the means, and sigma1 and sigma2 are the variances. And there is of length 400. And I can do that. And you see um, MATLAB notation, what you see in MATLAB notation is uh, this generates a normal random variable with uh, mean 0 and variance 1. And by multiplying and adding, I am going to get um, I'm going to get two different. Uh, so now I can just run this, and uh, you will see on the right, license, check out settings, some kind of DRM thing. Please, somebody save me from this. Um, so ignoring the DRM for a moment. What you see here, let's zoom out on this. Can you see it? No, I, let's not zoom out on this because it's, 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 let's just make it bigger. Okay, so what you see here are the two vectors. And obviously they are from uh, different distributions, but you see that they look very, very similar to each other. So the red ones are, uh, I think, Y, and the blue ones are X, I can check. And now I, I want to know if they are different distributions, yes or no. So I'm going to run the t-test function. And let's just, let's just get this. Uh, did you get the license? License and registration. Oh, OK. So now it's saying. Um, the code is basically, I'm just putting it up. It's saying that these are different distributions and it's pretty sure. Uh, it's 98.8% sure that these are different distributions. Um, standard biology rules are that if you're more than 95% sure of something, you're okay. This is what's called the p-value. So this is random, so I can just run it again. I'll get different. Uh, see, now it's a little less sure. I can run it once again. Okay, so now I was just doing this randomly once, once and over and over again. And now, so it happens that it's saying, listen, I'm not really sure about this. I'm only 34%. I mean, I don't really know if this is the same or different distribution. So what can I do to improve my confidence? What, what, uh, what can I do as an, uh, as, an, uh, as an attacker, as a measurer? Right, I can, I can just add more samples, add more measurements. So if I change my vector length to 4,000, what do you want from my life? 
So now it is very, very sure it's the probability one that they are different distributions, right? So uh, there is something called power analysis, which is a kind of a funny name because we are already using it in the sign in, in our domain. But power analysis means uh, that you feed in the means, the variances, and the confidence, and out what do you get? What is the output? It is the number of samples you should take to be confident. And now we have ammunition to go to our uh, systems engineer. We can tell our systems engineer, listen, if the attacker can measure 1,000 measurements, then with probability 95%, he can hack into our device. Now you need to do something about it, not with the difference of means. This, you can actually be scientific. And now, um, when you are writing your uh, attack code to solve assignment one, uh, I wonder if you will be using t-test or difference of means. Probably you're going to be using difference of means. But still, this is the right, if you want to, for example, prove that you are secure to some certification authority, this is what you should be doing. So uh, do I have anything else cool to show you with Matlab today? I think no. So let us return to the presentation. Um, um, was this uh, helpful, this, this live demo thing? Did you enjoy it? Okay. Right. right. Okay. Most of you are already in that shape. Yeah, let's go. Um, let's go back to the course. So, um, I have a problem with the t-test. No problem is the t-test assumes that all the measurements are independent. And in our case, our measurements are not independent. Why is it not independent? Because we're basically doing a very similar operation. How many students can convert lab to Python? I don't know. I have three labs, so two? I, I, I think two is more than enough. Let's, let's, let's start with two. Uh, but if you do it two instead of one, I want it to be really, really nice uh, bokeh graphs with uh, access labels and error handling and, and so on. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, uh, there are problems uh, with using t-test in, in, in our case, and the, and the problem is that our measurements are not independent. Specifically, we're always doing the same, um, actually, we're doing the same modular exponentiation, and we're also, the noise is not independent because the rest of the computation depends on the beginning of the computation. All of this hand waving is very clearly noted down in the Nike paper. The answer is that, you know, it works. So what do you want from me? It works. So if you want to explain to me why it doesn't work, but it works. So go and bother somebody else. It's still, you know, academically it could be interesting. So uh, let's continue now with uh, how do we get the full effect? So we got one bit of the key. How do we get to the next bit? What do we do now? Okay, we continue by induction. Ah, but I have a question for you. Um, let's see if I have it written down. Question for me, for you, is this. Every time, I, I'm going to do difference of means. Every time I compare two sets, one of them is going to have a greater distance of means than the other, without loss of generality. But sometimes I will get my guess wrong. Sometimes I will guess the wrong key because I didn't have enough samples, because I had a really bad luck with the noise. What will happen after I guess the wrong key bit once. What will happen in the next iteration of my attack? What will I see? Okay, so, so 
I think it's Dimitri, uh, saying the both difference of means will be small. What is going to happen now is that I, I'm going to try two ways of splitting my population into two sets. And because I have a bad simulation, both of the ways are going to be useless. Both of the splits are going to be random. So the difference of means of both indeed will be small. And now I want to show you a fascinating figure from the 98th paper. And in this figure, uh, the x-axis is, this is a real attack on a 512-bit five, RSA uh, smartphone. Uh, the x-axis is the key bit being guessed, starting from the leftmost bit. So 511 is the least significant bit. And, um, and the y-axis is the difference of means absolute value. And this is, of course, the maximal distance of means. You have two distance of means and you choose the, the maximal one. So this is the maximal one. And the values, uh, the, the axis here is relative. I don't know what it's relative scale. So uh, if you notice, first of all thing, uh, can you explain to me why zero does not appear here? Yeah, we know bit zero. What is bit zero? It's equal to one, right? Because otherwise it would, we would just skip. So bit zero was, uh, you can't get it for free. And do you notice a very interesting phenomenon around uh, bit number 150? Uh, it's very, very easy to see that something went terribly wrong around here. You can see that before that we had like distance of means around 300 and 400, and then we got down to 150, 200, and so on. So what happened probably is that because of noise or insufficient measurement or whatever what, uh, the simulation went the wrong way, and we started running uh, on incorrect qubits. So this is actually a, a failed attempt at extracting the key. So if you were implementing such an uh, uh, such an uh, uh, me mechanism, what what would you do? How do you detect such a thing, and how do you react to it? So yeah, we need to back up. So first of all, you need to set some kind of threshold or confidence value or some kind of metric and say, okay, I had a bunch of really, really bad guesses in a row, very bad distance of means, uh, and I'm in trouble. And then now you need to backtrack. Uh, basically, you undo the induction and you flip a bit and you keep going. Uh, it looks like it's bit 151, but it could have been 150, 149. Uh, I don't, how do I know the threshold? I don't know the threshold. I do the best I can. No idea what the threshold is. This is engineering. Uh, but again, doing this, uh, if you, if you, you know, 